A warning before we start. This episode contains serious allegations of physical assault and murder. From The Australian, here's what's on the front. I'm Kristen Amiot. It's Friday, July 12. A woman whose visa was cancelled by Immigration Minister Andrew Giles under the flawed Direction 99 will appeal the decision in the federal court. It could be a huge legal headache for the government if more foreign criminals caught up in the immigration bungle take their cases to court. That exclusive story by Rhiannon Down is live right now at theaustralian.com.au. A 28-year-old man was charged with three counts of domestic violence-related murder on Thursday after a fire at his home in Western Sydney killed two boys aged six and two and a five-month-old baby. The man was also charged with five counts of attempted murder relating to his partner and four other children who escaped the inferno with the help of a neighbour. The ex-wife of John Winfield told police the Lennox Head bricklayer choked and threatened to kill her. That's a stunning allegation made in the latest instalment of an investigation into the disappearance of Winfield's third wife, Bronwyn, in 1993. John Winfield has denied all wrongdoing. We'll have more on that later in the episode. First up, the podcast series by National Chief Correspondent Hedley Thomas dives deep in search of the missing Lennox Head mum. Lake Ainsworth on the New South Wales north coast. The Tea Tree Lake is a literal stone's throw from Lennox Head's famed Seven Mile Beach on its eastern edge. It's here that the road ends and passage between the two is only possible on foot. It's 12 hectares or about 20 football fields of deep, dark, fresh water, stained by tannins from the paper bark trees that hug its perimeter. In the warmer months, locals and tourists pull up stumps, swimming and barbecuing their way through long summer days. And it's here, in this deep, still water, that some friends and family believe Bronwyn Winfield's body has been hidden for 31 years. Bronwyn Winfield vanished from her home on Sandstone Crescent in Lennox Head on the evening of May 16, 1993. On that night, she tucked her two little girls into bed and kissed them goodnight. Her husband, John Winfield, says she was feeling overwhelmed by the disintegration of their relationship and caring for the two little girls on her own. And he says she relayed her intentions to take a break from it all for a couple of days. Then he says she made a phone call, got into a car out the front and left their Sandstone Crescent house around 9.30pm. Bronwyn hasn't been seen or heard from since. John Winfield has denied all wrongdoing. Bronwyn Winfield's mysterious disappearance is the subject of an investigative podcast by the Australian's National Chief Correspondent, Hedley Thomas. In that series, Bronwyn's loved ones have voiced their grave concerns about what they believe happened on the night she disappeared three decades ago. We're just shortest route. If you're looking for a body of water, is Lake Ainsworth. That's Bronwyn Winfield's brother, Andy Reid. He was joined by his wife, Michelle, in episode nine of the Bronwyn podcast. The street on the right-hand side of the lake, and if you go up there, you can nearly, at some points, back your car or park right beside the edge of the road and the water's right next to you. What's the function of the surfboard? To be able to take her out to the centre of the lake where it's quite deep, weigh it down, drop her off the board, paddle back in, come home, pick up the girls, bail out to Sydney. Lake Ainsworth is about seven minutes' drive from Sandstone Crescent, potentially faster at night when there are less cars on the road and fewer pedestrians milling about. Andy Reid and others believe it's plausible Bronwyn Winfield met with foul play sometime after her children went to bed and that her husband bundled her body into the family car, paddled out on Lake Ainsworth, and submerged Bronwyn's body into that dark water. Swim all the way out, out to the middle, 
She put jump back on, paddle back in, job done, 10 minutes flat. It's a terrible thing to be thinking of, but makes sense. Bronwyn's cousin, Madison Walsh, has just completed a degree in forensic science and believes searching the lake is a worthwhile exercise. She's been assisting Headley with this investigation into the disappearance of the cousin who vanished before she was born. I think we need to get a, a sonar, a side scan sonar, because they have found so many people. I will happily die if we find something. And the police aren't doing anything, so it might just have to be us. And so off they went. On a windy weekend in early July, Headley, Maddie and a contingent of search and rescue experts, including a former Australian Navy captain, travelled to Lake Ainsworth, where they probed its murky depths for signs of Bronwyn Winfield. Some intriguing discoveries were made, like a brick pulled from the lake's depths. It appears as potentially something an item larger than, than what I've been seeing, so I'd like to, to get the diver down to investigate what it could potentially be. It's in the far northwest corner of the lake, uh, which correlates to potentially a track in this. Well, this was a very different type of search because the police had no connection to this. Headley Thomas is the Australian's national chief correspondent and the creator of the investigative podcast Bronwyn. It was really conducted by volunteers, solely volunteers, who had specialised training. We had Ash McDonald, a very highly trained scuba diver, former Australian Navy captain, and Chris Darcy, who has a lot of experience in doing searches of terrain and underwater. He has side scan sonar and he also has cadaver dogs. And they gave their time their equipment, they travelled from Sydney and Newcastle respectively and we're very grateful. And this is the lake that is very close to the beach north of Lennox. It's loved by the locals and it was a popular place for Bronwyn and John too when they lived together in Lennox. It must have been a really difficult time for Andy. He'd come up with his daughter, Caitlin, and they were very apprehensive but Also, I think joining in what was a really positive community spirit. People came down to see what we were doing. Friends of Bronwyn, people who have been featured in the podcast who have helped me with the investigation, they also came down to the shore. And, you know, there was a nice atmosphere. But everybody knew that, you know, we were looking for Bronwyn's body. That's what Andy wanted to find. And he said at one point, you know, wouldn't it just be remarkable if I went out on the boat with Chris and found my own sister's body. Coming up, what's next for this remarkable investigation? Subscribers to The Australian hear episodes of Bronwyn first. Episode 10 is live right now at bronwynpodcast.com. A subscription also includes all of The Australian's world-class journalism and commentary, as well as breaking news alerts, newsletters and special events. Join us at theaustralian.com.au and we'll be back after this break. There's been a development in the suspected murder of New South Wales mother Bronwyn Winfield more than three decades ago. A witness account which was previously dismissed is now being considered by detectives. Headley Thomas's investigative podcast series into the disappearance of Lennox head mother Bronwyn Winfield has advanced her case in leaps and bounds since it first aired in late May. It brought to light the extraordinary account of Judy Singh, who was ignored by New South Wales police assigned to the investigation in those early days, when Bronwyn Winfield was being treated as a missing person, not a potential homicide victim. And I could see directly into the car, and I, I saw this, what looked to be like a mummy in the back of the car. And I thought, what are you going late at night with, you know, something that, 
looked like, I just called it a mummy. And I thought, well, even if he was taking out belongings, you wouldn't make it look like a body. Do you know what I mean? In the weeks since that episode was released, police have interviewed Judy Singh at length and visited her old stomping ground near Sandstone Crescent in order to finally understand what she says she saw on the evening of May 16, 1993, the last time Bronwyn Winfield was seen alive. And still the revelations are coming. Episode 10 of Bronwyn, released for the Australian subscribers on Thursday, revealed disturbing allegations made by John Winfield's ex-wife about their relationship. Jennifer Mason married John Winfield when she was a teenager after falling pregnant with his child in early 1974. In a statement to police made in 1998, when the detective Glenn Taylor finally conducted a thorough investigation into Bronwyn Winfield's disappearance, Jenny Mason claimed she was scared of Winfield's temper and alleges he choked and threatened to kill her. A voice actor is reading part of that statement. I recall on one occasion when he pushed me back onto the bed because I'd answered back to him. On that time, he scared me a great deal. He said to me, I'll kill you if you say that again. And at the time, he had his hands around my throat and was squeezing. I remember I managed to say, go ahead. And to my surprise, he kept squeezing me around the throat. I managed to kick him in the groin and I got away from him and hid in the outside laundry. When Headley first began work on Bronwyn, he believed the series would comprise six, maybe eight episodes. But now there are ten, running at about an hour apiece. If you ran all the scripts back to back, you'd have enough for a pretty chunky book, and that's to say nothing of the many drafts and edits that don't make the final cut. Now, the podcast will take a break. Something remarkable has happened during the eight weeks we've been releasing weekly episodes. We've been deluged with information from members of the public. Friends and acquaintances of Bronwyn and John have been sharing a lot too. Hundreds of listeners have contacted me via bronwyn at theaustralian.com.au with information, and some of it is, we believe, very significant. Our Facebook group, the Bronwyn Podcast Official Discussion Group, has become a lively exercise in crowd-solving with listeners constructively putting together maps and timelines to try to work out what might have happened. As a result, the narrative arc of the Bronwyn series has changed fundamentally. One of the key reasons this investigative podcast began was because I believe Bronwyn's disappearance and alleged murder could still be solved. This belief has only grown stronger as the series has unfolded. Hedley Thomas is The Australian's National Chief Correspondent and the creator of the investigative podcast, Bronwyn. Thanks for joining us on The Front this week. Our team is Claire Harvey, Jasper Leake, Liat Samaglu, Josh Burton, Matthew Condon, Tiffany Dimack and me, Kristen Amiot. 